Hello Scouts, so it's time for a, another video session. Um, this is an Easter special, it's not going to be a full video. Something I wanted to do last week about fire starting um, and I didn't get the opportunity to do. So, <clears throat> what we're going to do is a session on how to light a fire. The first thing we need to emphasise is you mustn't do this without adult supervision and it must be in a suitable place. <coughs> it's really important, especially at the moment, the emergency service is stretched. We don't want the fire service having to be called out or you having to go to hospital. But if you follow what we do here and you have adult supervision, it is perfectly safe. Okay, so the first thing we were going to think about when lighting the fire <coughs> is where you're going to make your fire. It's really important to make sure that if you're having a fire, that it doesn't spread, that the fire is contained. You want to choose an area that is safe. Ideally, you might use a fire pit that's ready made or an altar fire somewhere that doesn't have any combustible materials around it. If you're going to light a fire on grass, one thing you can do is cut out an area of turf, remove it, have the fire and then put the turf back afterwards. You need to make sure that the area is clean before you lay your fire and clear of anything that might be flammable. You also need to remove any stones. You will see sometimes in films and cartoons people with a ring of stones around the fire. That's fine if you know what the stones are, but certain stones like flint, which we have a lot of here, will explode in a fire, and certain stones that are porous that let in water, water expands, they will explode as well. So it's really important to have any stones in the fire. The other thing is don't just look at the ground around you, but a look above you. Make sure you haven't got any trees low over the fire, because the fire and heat rises, A, you'll damage the tree, but B, you could actually catch the tree on fire, um, and I have seen this happen, um, and potentially you're going to start a, a major forest fire. So really important safety of where you're going to site your fire. Okay, so how do we light fires? Humans have been lighting fires possibly for about 350,000 years. So some of the earliest methods we think are friction method. Literally rubbing two surfaces together to produce heat. Um, one example, and this is a modern version, is a fire bow. And this is a cheap Chinese one, doesn't work very well. But the idea is, as you turn the bow and you get faster and faster and faster, it causes friction and it heats up and you eventually get smoke. This one's a bit rubbish, we're not going to use it. At some point, somewhere between maybe as far back as 10,000 years ago, cer certainly by about 1000 BC, People started using steels to light fires. Um, the first one were naturally occurring, and then people started to work iron. And this is a, a, a fire steel or a fire strike. These were used right from before the Roman period, right up to just over 100 years ago. Very simple. It's a piece of um, low carbon steel, and you've got a striker, usually a piece of flint. Flint is a really hard stone um, that is found right around this area, actually. And the idea is, is when you strike the steel against the flint, little bits of the metal are actually sheared off, and they're sheared off with such force that they ignite, and that's the spark. You may not actually be able to see the sparks. They're very small on this, and you actually use it with some char cloth um, and the idea of char cloth is it's a char piece of cloth and I'll show you how to make some shortly um, that will hold the spark so this method used very successful for most of human history um, <clears throat> you will be more familiar with this type of fire strike this is not actually steel this is ferrocerium it has iron in it it has cerium in it it has um, a number of other rare metals in it, um, and including magnesium. And this sparks a lot more uh, easily than, than the steel. So if I give an example, and I'm using a flint again. These usually come with a steel striker. A piece of flint is far more effective. You will see. So you should be able to see on the video there, loads of sparks. So. This is the same material that's used in modern lighters, 
that's used uh, to ignite welding torches, all sorts of things where, where a spark is needed to ignite a fire. Okay, so um, <clears throat> the next thing we're going to look at is matches. So this method has been used for most of human history. By the 1800s, people were looking at new ways of um, lighting fires. So the first chemical match was invented in 1860, um, 1816, sorry, and by 1830 they were on sale. Um, the safety match like this uh, was not invented until 1851, so 170 years ago. They're called a safety match because they can only be lit on striker. Up to this point, you could light a match on any surface, your teeth, the bottom sole of your boots, and that was actually quite dangerous. So, safety match has been around. Now, you'll immediately see the problem with a safety match. These are designed for indoor use. In a house with a fireplace, there is no breeze. As soon as you're outside, it goes out. This is why we don't tend to use them for lighting fires. Also, if they get wet, they are absolutely useless. That gets wet, you can dry it off and use it. This gets wet, you can dry off and use it. This, as soon as the box is wet, they're absolutely useless. There are types of um, match that we can use outside. This is a lifeboat match, or sometimes called survival match. Um, these are designed to be used in any conditions. These will burn in rain, in stormy weather, they'll burn underwater. Again, we don't use them because they're really expensive. Um, I think you get about 10, about three or four pounds. Have a striker on the side, and you can see it burning there. I put it under water, and it's still burning, comes back. So they are, uh, yeah, just a bit of flame there. These are great for in a survival kit, um, but they're very expensive, and really you're much better off if you're lighting a fire with something like the fire still. Okay, the final method I've got here is a lighter. So this actually works on exactly the same principle as this. You're producing a spark and there is a fuel in here and the spark lights the fuel. Actually again not very good outside because the flame tends to blow out, you need fuel in it. This one's better than a hand lighter because at least you can get in. Um, I wouldn't particularly recommend it. Okay, so once we have our fire lighting method, we need something to light. So a fire depends on three things. It's what we call the fire triangle. The fire triangle mean, consists of three things. It consists of fuel, something to burn, oxygen and heat. You need all three to make a fire and you take any one of those away and the fire stops. So our heat is our sparks. Our fuel is the thing we're going to burn and the oxygen is around us. The fire is actually what's called oxidation. It is combining the oxygen and the air in a chemical process with the fuel. Okay, so when you're lighting a fire, you can't just light a large piece of wood like this. This it takes too much heat. You can't produce enough heat initially to burn something like this. You have to start off with something small. It's what we call tinder. One of the most useful things, and cheapest, is cotton wool. Cotton wool burns really easily, it can be fluffed out, it's cheap, it's a really good source. Um, more natural source, this is jute, um, it's plant fibre, very similar to cotton wool. Also got here, this is called tinder card. Um, it comes in a card form and you can open it up and you rough it up and with the rough edges it'll hold a spark and it'll burn and it'll keep burning so quite a useful thing to have um, it's easy to store 
You can also use um, things like dried leaves. They're not great, they're a bit smoky. Dried grasses. Um, I spoke about earlier about char cloth and when people used um, a traditional fire steel, what they would do is they would have in their tinder kit, tinder box, they would have char cloth. Now this is cotton, or you can use linen as well, a natural fibre which has been um, heated up without oxygen and it's a bit like charcoal. And you'll see when we do the fire lighting, once a spark goes on here, the spark stays and spreads. And you can then use this to light your um, tinder. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to have a look at lighting a fire. So one of the most important things about lighting a fire is the preparation beforehand. One of the things I've noticed regularly with scouts lighting fires is they get the initial fire lit, but they do not have the fuel afterwards um, to keep the fire going. So the fire's lit, and then the scouts go off and look for wood to put on fire, and by the time they come back, the fire's gone out. So in order to light a fire, you want to have your materials ready. Um, you really need three types of wood. An easy way to remember this is breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So this is your breakfast. These are really small bits. These are like the size of a match or a pencil. These are going to be the first things that burn. They will ignite really easily from the tinder. Once these are burning, you've got your lunch. These are larger bits, not massive, maybe the size of a chocolate bar. Once the, this um, here, these sticks will have sufficient heat to ignite these. Once these get going, they may be burned for five or ten minutes. They will be enough to start the bigger bits of wood going. And you can see I've got a selection of sizes here. These are ones I've chopped myself um, and split myself. So eventually you'll get to bigger pieces. You don't want bits too big. If you're having a big fire that's lasting um, for days and days, yeah, sure, you can have a big log. But again, you need to work up in sizes. Okay, so I'm using a fire pit here. So this is a steel bowl. It's off the ground and it contains... Okay, so you can hold the char cloth on the flint. We're going to put the char cloth in the tinder here and then we're going to transfer it into here. So remember when I said drawing away, you can see the sparks here. Okay, now we've got the spark. The char cloth has held the spark. Okay, that's a lit now. So we're just blowing a little bit, adding the oxygen. This is the important bit when we get our little sticks on. Okay, 
but some of this wood around the outside has actually already lit which is really good you can see the flames coming up here it's really important at this point to keep feeding your fire and not putting too much on if we put too much on we're going to um, smother the fire we don't keep feeding it enough it's going to die okay Maybe start putting a few little bigger bits on here. Okay, so this fire is going quite nicely at the moment, but it's still a crucial stage. This is mainly the small stuff burning. So it could still but you still got to keep an eye on it. And probably for the first 20, 30 minutes, you're going to have to keep feeding bits. Once it gets established, you're going to feed it less often. It's important though, you never leave a fire. You've always got someone watching it. Um, So there we go, fire started. Okay, so we've got our fire going nicely here. Um, in a little bit, when it's died down, um, we're gonna make some charcoal on it. Um, just a little bit on fire safety. Obviously, this fire is really hot, dangerous, um, potentially dangerous if you don't take the right precautions. So it's really important, there's a temptation, everyone loves poking a fire. And Maybe that you sometimes have to move something in the fire. If you do, it's important that you make sure you do it at a distance. Um, this here is a really good fire poker because I can move things at a distance. Um, it also has the advantage actually that it's hollow, so if I need to blow on the fire, I don't on this case, but I can do so from a distance. So it's really important um, that you treat fire with respect. Um, don't sit too close because the um, fire can spit and make sure you are wearing where possible natural fibers so I've got jeans here these are made of cotton um, if a spark comes out it'll singe it if I was wearing nylon uh, a nylon tracksuit it's possible that that will actually catch fire and burn me um, potentially quite badly it'll also melt and not what's underneath is my skin so treat the fire with respect the other thing that's important is to have precautions. Now, there's no need to have a big fire extinguisher here, but you do need a method to put the fire out in case of emergency. So we have next to the fire here, just a bucket full of water. If, for example, I knock this fire over, it catches something alight, at least I can then douse it, okay? So really important. The other thing is, if I'm outside and I do have a burn, I can then at least put my hand or whatever's burnt in the cold water until I can get further treatment. Um, not so important when the house is just over there and I could run it under a tap, but when you're out in the woods and you don't have that, really important to have some form of extinguishing the fire. Okay? Cool. So the next thing we're gonna do is have a look at making char cloth. As I explained, char cloth is used with a um, fire strike or a steel and flint um, to hold the spark and to transfer it to your tinder. Um, it would have been a staple of any tinder box or fire lighting kit. Um, this is my little fire lighting kit so it has tinder in here, it has some flints, um, it has my fire steel and it has my char cloth which unfortunately is now empty so we're going to make some more. So making char cloth is really easy. You can make it on a fire you can make it on a uh, stove or cooker in the house if you're really careful. Um, what you need first of all is a tin, and you can see it's been used quite a lot because it's quite burnt, and with just a hole punched on the top. Um, this is an air rifle pellet tin, um, travel suite tin is suitable, anything where you can securely put a lid on. So the next thing we're going to do is we actually need some cloth. Now it's really important 
and the cloth you need you use is natural cloth if you use anything that's artificial fibers you will just have a horrible sticky mess okay so this is cotton um, <clears throat> this is actually a old scout t-shirt uh, you can see here great tower scout activity center got a bit past it um, so it's very simple when I first started doing this I would mark out lovely circles and cut them out neatly um, and realized it's a bit pointless um, so all we need to do is get a edge of this and we're just going to cut out a square of cloth and put that in. There's a couple in there already. Um, probably four or five is probably the maximum. You don't want to stuff it in there too much, um, just until it's full up. Um, as you can always make more, it doesn't take a particularly long time. Okay, so we just put the top on. Next thing we're going to do on this, we're going to put this, you can even put this if you've got an electric hob, you can put it on, but be careful. Um, best to do it outside. Um, we're going to put this on the embers. Um, you'll then see this smokes, and what we can do is light the smoke that comes off. And the reason we do that, that burns off all the gases that come out, but when it, it goes out, we know the charcoal's ready. Um, what's important is you don't go and pick it up right away because it's going to be red hot. You wait till the fire's gone out, let it cool down, and then we can open up the charcoal. Okay. Okay, so we're going to put the, char the uh, tin with the charcoal thing on the fire. Really important, don't just stick your hand in there because you're going to burn yourself. So I've got a long handed spatula, you could use tongs, and I'm just going to place this down onto the embers there. And what we're going to watch for is um, the smoke coming out. If you do this on a stove, um, you can use a, a match to light the, uh, the smoke that comes out. Um, I wouldn't bother here. It may self-ignite. If not, it doesn't matter, but you don't want to risk trying to put your hand into there. So... If you look closely at the hole in the middle, you can start to see smoke coming out. There you go, there's a nice line of smoke that may ignite, it may not. Um, yeah, it is actually burning slightly there, that's lovely. So we're going to leave that for about 10 minutes. Yeah, there's a nice flame coming out of there um, until it's no longer smoking or flaming, and then we can take it off and let it cool down. Okay, so it's been, actually this is quite quick, probably about five minutes. Um, you can see that there's no smoke or flames coming from the hole on this, so this is ready now. So I'm going to very carefully take this off the fire. I'm going to put this down um, and leave it now um, for probably about an hour because it needs to cool down. Um, once it's cooled down, we can open it up and have a look. Um, this method that we've used here is actually a similar method we can use to make charcoal so either charcoal for drawing or actual charcoal for burning so um, later if I can find a steel box um, then um, like a biscuit tin um, we'll probably do another video and show you how to make charcoal um, so we'll be back as soon as this is cooled okay so it's been a while now we've uh, let the charcoal cool down so here it is and we've got Open this up, sometimes a bit stiff when it comes off the fire. And there you go. So you can see this is our cloth now. It's quite thin, it's charred, uh, and this will hold a spark. Um, and we can make some more, fill this up. Um, I actually have a separate box here that I'll just keep it in. There we go. And really useful uh, addition to any fire making uh, kit. Uh, and I think probably when we uh, go out and camp or we do some fire lighting, we'll actually have a go at making some of this. Um, so that's pretty much all for this week. Um, we'll be back after Easter 
and I'll do all the normal things uh, that I've done in the last video, such as we'll do a book review and a YouTube review and some activity. Um, so have a great Easter, stay safe and we'll see you soon.